Good morning. Uh, welcome. And uh, we, I believe God will answer us. And uh, yes, prayer is our only hope. When you lose prayer, whatever you are hoping for, there's nothing. Prayer is the key. We should be praying tearfully with tears and reciting psalms. Many hours during the day. We should be praying tearfully and reciting psalms many hours during the day. You must give prayer and meditation quantitative and qualitative attention. Tell you never. You must give prayer and meditation quantitative and qualitative attention. Again, please. You must give prayer and meditation quantitative and qualitative attention. Man should and must rubricate his mind or a mind with extensive prayer. Man must or should rubricate his mind or a mind with extensive prayer. Today, ask God to help you desire him more. Now, we'll offer prayer and just ask God to help you Desire him more. One, two, three. G. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. No, one more time. One, two, three. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Prayer. In Jesus Christ's name, we have prayed. Amen. We have prayed. Amen. Man's ability, or in short, your ability to pray depends on your personal holiness. Tell your neighbor. Your ability to pray depends on your personal holiness. Yes. If your holiness is questionable, prayer will be questionable. Once people who have their holiness questionable, they offer prayer to God like SMS. Tell your neighbor. Yes. 
you offer God SMS prayer. You know SMS on your phone? That's the way you offer your prayer. And that SMS, when you say send, it said message not sent. Your prayer. Can you say go straight to God and we'll come it? Say, sweet aroma. Let's pray together. Dear God, Dear God, help me, help me to cling to you always. To cling to you always. Dear God, Dear God, help me, help me to cling to you. To cling to you always. Always. I don't want anything from this world. I don't want anything from this world. I only want you. 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 Only you. Only you. I want to remember you. I want to remember you. Every moment of my life. Every moment of my life. I want to remember you. I want to remember you. Every moment of my life. Every moment of my life. To think of you. To think of you. Always. Always. Every moment. Every moment. That I feel you are with me. That I feel you are with me. That is my complete happiness. That is my complete happiness. Every moment. Every moment. That I feel. That I feel. You are with me. You are with me. That is my complete happiness. That is my complete happiness. Merciful Father. Merciful Father. Please. Please. Bring me close. Bring me close. To yourself. Yourself. Please, Father. Please, Father. Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. Please. Please. Bring me. Bring me. Close. Close. To yourself. To yourself. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's clap for Jesus. <laughs> when you invest in prayer, your investment is very, very rich. It's worth the effort investing in prayer. You don't lose. When you invest in prayer, you don't lose. That's how I told you. Prayer is our only hope. Everything else, nothing. We may take us it. Yes. I'll just give words of wisdom first, then we 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 see what God has for us. Because we are destroyed by our own wrong desires. Desires are good, but what type of desires do you have? Because whatever desires you have, that's what you pursue. If your desires are wrong, see what you are pursuing. Up until now, you've been bribed by your own desire or desires. Your own desires has bribed you. When you have this, you'll be happy. When you have this, you'll be happy. When you have this, you'll be happy. When you do this, you'll be happy. When your desires as what? Bribed me. These are words of wisdom. This, this is what causes man to fail. You run very, very far. Uh, I want this, I want this. These desires have bribed you. Look at your desires that are destructive.
you know, this desire I'm after, it is destructive. But because it appears good, though you know the desire itself is wrong, but it appears attractive, you go ahead and do it. People are in sickbed now. People are in jail. People are everywhere, suffering. Because of what? Desires. Wrong desires. Desires are good. But wrong ones, mm -mm. then how do you know that this is the right desire? A right desire should lead you to your destiny. That's the right desire. Why do people have all these wrong desires? It's simple. They have 40 wrong vision. When you have wrong vision, you have self-deception. You are self-deceiving because of the vision. It starts with vision. Then what you're achieving now, you are baptized in self-deception. I'm doing this, I'm doing this, I'm going to do this. Ah, you should not have this, this is not vision. You have deceived yourself. With self-deception, people have wasted million and million of money Rant, achieving nothing. But in self-deception, there are consequences. In self-deception, there are what? Consequences. Yes. You argue, this is me, this is what I'm doing, okay. Time will tell. Time will tell. Because God is not a mocker. Time will tell. Does your vision involve jealousy? Does your vision involve lusts? Lusts. Does your vision involve glory? You want glory. People to say you have arrived. People to say you are making it. And you tell people you are made. I'm made. You are seeking glory. Wait, there's the end. Then you know it wasn't true vision. I was seeking glory. I was seeking lusts to acquire this and this. You are not fulfilled. Jealousies. This is December time now. Going to your villages. Jealousies. To protect yourself, you should seek A spiritual goal in life. That's what, that's what is making me. I got a spiritual goal in life. That's all. When I can ask people a question now, do you have a spiritual goal? Ask your neighbor. Do you have a spiritual goal? In your life. In your life. Buying a Bible is not a spiritual goal. Attending church, that's the beginning of what you want to be, but that's not yet a goal. Yes? God created 
the whole universe, the whole world, through 10 utterances, let there be, let there be. through 10 utterances, So from there you can see that words create worlds. Tell your neighbor. <laughs> from there you can see that words create worlds. Also, words destroy the worlds. Words create and words destroy. You are here, some of you look, seeing us by television. Words spoken by someone has shattered you, has destroyed you. You've got no confidence now. They said you have this and this and you believed. Gossip destroys three people. Tell you never. Gossip destroys three people. Number one, the one who speaks it. Number one, the one who speaks it. The originator of the gossip is destroyed. Number two. The one who hears it. So you cannot hear gossip and be all right. You are destroyed by the gossip you have heard. <laughs> Number three, the person about whom one they are speaking about. So three people. Three people. Where are you found? Are you the originator? Are you the one who hears it? Or are you the one spoken about? Simple warning. Why all family are destroyed, what and what, friendship and all. Companies coming down and all. Gossip. This gossip has got the capacity to destroy someone even 10,000 kilometers away from you. It destroys. Thousands and thousands of kilometers away from you. Gossip is power to destroy that one. How many are free? How many are free of this poison? And with this, you want God to bless you. With this, you want to read the Holy Scripture. Holy. The Scripture is holy. You want to read it. After, whoa, 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 whoa. That's why our life is not going anywhere. And you are blaming Satan. Ephesians 4, verse 26. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 26. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath. Again, please. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 26. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath. How many now here have got anger for generation? 
and you can say how sinful you have been. Anger, you have kept it since 16 years. Now you are 42. And you say you are free. Do, sun, do not allow the sun to set on it. But you, you are entitled. God said, you can be angry. But when the sun is setting, let anger go. Have you let all your anger go? Are you here? Yes. Are you free? No. Why? You are disobeying scripture. Huh? Willingly. <laughs> there are three phases to anger. Look, this is preparation for blessing. You cannot be blessed when God says, do not have this. You, you have, but you are praying. Bless me with abundance. Bless me with, it. how? With your anger like this, God to bless you materially, you are so dangerous. You are very, very dangerous. It cannot happen. That's why you force your blessing. That's why you run after it. You do anything. To look prosperous. It's God who blesses. It is God who honors. And the increase of God add no sorrow. You don't look behind. Who's coming? What is happening? Oh, I'm afraid. I'm going to go to Zondo Commission. Tell you never. Increase of God has no sorrow. Now, stages or phases of anger are three. A, number A, or one, the feeling upon being provoked. You know when you're provoked, that feeling. The feeling upon being provoked. It's a feeling. Number two, the reaction to the provocation. <laughs> Number three, the retention of the feeling, resentment. The retention of the feeling, resentment. In resentment, it's where there's rage. Rage. Ah. How many people are on three? Raise your hand, please. How did you enter there? Why not contain the feeling and take it out? This is the feeling. I mustn't keep it. I mustn't retain this feeling. Feeling provoked. One has got little or no control over it. It's a feeling. Tell your neighbor. Feeling provoked. One has got little or no control over it. It's Again, a feeling. Please. Again, please. Feeling provoked. One has got little or no control over it. It's a feeling. A lot of you, you are supposed to be wise. But anger has caused you to lose your wisdom. You. You are supposed to be wise. Tell your neighbor, you. 
you, you are supposed to be wise. You are supposed to be wise. But anger, but anger has caused you, has caused you to lose your wisdom. To lose your wisdom. That's why a genuine prophet, prophet will never lose you will never go to anger because anger will make a prophet lose his prophecy. Yes. So some of you, God was raising you up into that realm to be a prophet for God. But your anger, you have lost your prophecy. You lose your prophecy. You can't. All that anger has done to you, because it is destructive, anger knows no prejudice. It knows no prejudice. Other, our uncles, our brothers, our sisters, they are behind bars now, serving a sentence because of anger, rage. Not because these are bad people, no, but because they have uncontrolled anger. Uncontrolled. Tell your neighbor, anger has got appetite to destroy. Anger has got appetite to destroy. Again, please. Anger has got appetite to destroy. And anger destroys anything on its path. And anger destroys anything on its path. Marriages are casualties to anger. Families are casualties to anger. Friendships are casualties to anger. Careers, careers, destinies have been affected by anger and have been destroyed by it. People don't have destiny now. People, they left the job because somebody was saying something. I'm angry. I can't be treated like this. I'm going. Ah. <clears throat> I'm stopping this business because there's a lot of competition. Anger is aroused when someone does something against what you believe. How can you do this to me? Or when one says something, or when one does something, that appears to be in opposition to what you desire. You get angry. In short, anger is temporal madness. Tell your neighbor. In short, anger is temporal madness. But though it's temporal madness, the innocent often get the backlash. You've been angered at work because you, can con you can't control your anger. You come at home, 
you destroy all flowers that your wife was putting as a decoration. You destroy windows that was covering you from rain. You puncture tires of a car. You destroy windscreen. You tear certificate. You're angry. This certificate is nothing. Hey. <laughs> You're angry, got a car. Speed limit 120, 180. You are angry. You are mad now. Speed limit there is 120. Look at how you are driving. I know. What do you know? You are angry. You are angry. You don't know how to control yourself. You sit next to the fridge. You are eating everything. <laughs> it's good for those who are angry. They go to the gym and lift the heaviest metal. <clears throat> and this is good. But they are also dangerous. What if they won't find gym? They will gym on you. <laughs> Why not control it? Why not go out? Why not control it? All these are not punishment, but natural consequences of anger. Everything that you have lost, it is not punishment. That is the natural consequences of one who is angry. That's what you get now. This one is angry, we are not going to eat. This one is angry, we are not going to go for holiday. This one is angry. Consequences follow. Hello? A lot of here, a lot of us here. Consequences are what we are benefiting now. Even if your rage or your anger is justified, no. Capital no. There's no justified anger. There's no justified rage. I'll give you an example. If someone wants to get something, all right, in your house, you want to get something, everything here, your, in your cupboard, Everything is a flame. You want to get something and you put your hand in. Is your hand going to be burnt or not? I can't hear you. Is putting your hand in there and getting burned, is it punishment or is it natural consequences? Natural consequences. That's your anger. Tell your never. That's your anger. Discuss again. You put in your hand in fire to get something or whatever, and you say, I'm burnt. This is punishment. No, no, no. This is just natural consequence. Look at your life. It's not punishment. I say, look at your life. Don't look at me. You have yourself. You lose yourself when you're angry. Remember the burning of the hand. It is destructive even when just fight. It is what? Destructive, even when justified. Right now, we're going towards 
celebration, people have even forgotten what Christmas is. But because people are angry, <laughs> they don't have this, they don't have that, they don't have that. <sighs> people near an angry person this time, this season, they feel the hostility. What's that? Your son, your daughter should not talk on money matters. Just pray. Just pray. Go and pray. When one is angry, as is the case now, children, they feel the hostility. Even a dog that is very innocent is kicked. Flowers that are not watered. Pots, plates, above fallen prey to one who is angry. Anger is a danger to those around us. Proverbs 16, verse 32. He who is slow to anger is better than the mighty. And he who rules his spirit than he who takes a city. To deal with anger completely, start with little things. Somebody has taken your pen. You say, ah, it's okay. I think you didn't have it. I have two. It's okay, take it. Every, every little thing, just overlook. Ken was jealous of his brother Abel. Ken was not going to kill his brother if he did not have anger. And they were the first, first brothers here on, on earth. First. The others was father and mother. First people. God warned Ken. God is warning you about your anger. What are you doing about You think God is just joking with you? Anger will stop everything working in your life. And even those things that you have right now will start drying up. It's anger. God told Ken, Control this thing before it comes out of, uh, before it consumes you. Control this anger of yours. Can have the choice. You have a choice. Even this time. You have a choice not to have envy. You have a choice not to have jealousy. It's, you have a choice. You have a choice not to be proud. It's a choice. But the disobedience towards God is always hidden in one's heart. Even here. You are writing all these notes, but still deep down in your heart, there is what? Disobedience. Disobedience. It says, okay. I said there is no anger that is justified. If anger could be justified, you can put your hand in a hot burning place and take whatever you want and your hand will not burn. Then it, it's all right. But if your hand burns, then it's not just fight. Anger is an emotion that never considers truth. Tell your neighbor. Anger is an emotion that never considers truth. That's why angry person will say, listen to me, listen to me. You don't want to listen to the other one. You don't want to consider what the other one is saying. And when anger is out, there's no containing its destructive force.
Are we all right? Anyone with question so far? When you are angry, you give your thoughts and actions to the devil to play with you. You become the devil's playground. Tell your neighbor, your anger, you, your anger. you become you become devils, devils satans, satans, playground. playground. So far, now here, how many see themselves to be this playground? Yes. I mean, be honest, honestly. You know yourself, you cannot hide. I said, check your heart, not the way you appear. No, no, no. It's your heart. Sir. How is it? Yes? Yes, sir. Uh, deep down, I, I do know that I'm a very angry person, sir, and I am a playground for the devil, sir. Playground? Playground, sir. Why? Sir, I, I would say uh, I choose not to have control over it. After oh. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, you, 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 you are the verse of destruction, sin, and death. As you are walking... You are the verse of destruction, sin, and death. You can't have life. It's just a matter of time. All this will be in you. Now, because you are working, you got income. That's why you don't see these three stages. But they're already in motion. They're already in motion, Sonny. And no one here can say, this is who I am. When your mother gave birth to you, were you like that? <laughs> Refusing baby milk from her. You say, I'm hungry. I can't take this. <laughs> As I'm talking here, many, with a heavy heart, honestly, many people, thank you, sir, many people, have lost much because of this uncontrolled anger. You have lost much. You have lost opportunities. The important thing is not always what you say, but how you say it. How you say it. God said to Ken, surely this is my paraphrase, Philip Banda paraphrase. Because I want to understand Bible clear, not pretend that I've understood it. God said to Ken, Ken, if you improve yourself, you will be forgiven. But if you do not improve yourself, sin rests at the door. Repeat again. Okay. If you improve yourself, you will be forgiven. But if you do not improve yourself, sin rests at the door. Again, please. Cain, if you improve yourself, you will be forgiven. But if you do not improve yourself, sin rests at sin rests at the door. That's Genesis 4, 7, when you go and read. That's Philip Banda translation. What you read, say, Philip Banda translation, madam, read it. Cain, if you improve yourself, you will be forgiven. But if you do not improve yourself, sin rests at the door.
Because when one improves himself has, or herself, you develop desirable character trends. You develop them. You improve yourself, not to get ways. No. When you get ways, I'll tell you later. But when you improve yourself and develop desirable character trends, you'll be able to tolerate everyone. You'll be able to tolerate everyone. How does God tolerate all of us? In fact, ask your neighbor, God tolerates you, but you cannot tolerate me. God tolerates you, but you cannot tolerate me. Why? Why? You have not developed what? Desirable character traits. That's all. That's why you are lying, cheating, stealing, everything, anger, hiding. Truth is foreign to you. Okay, let us see. If you do not improve yourself, you will be sinful. Yes. If you do not improve yourself, you will be sinful. Louder. If you do not improve yourself, you will be sinful. That is. It's you. It's not the world. It's not where you work. It's not wha whatever family. No, no, no. When you improve yourself, you avoid sin when you improve yourself. But if you do not improve yourself, you will be sinful. And you will find sin everywhere you go. <laughs> Say it, please. If you do not improve yourself, mm -hmm. you will be sinful. And you'll find sin everywhere you go. That's what God said to Ken. Everywhere. You cannot say eh, 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 there's so much sin in Johannesburg. No, it's you. Even if you can go to a mountain place in Venda, you'll be sinful because sin is with you. you be everywhere you see, you'll be seeing what? Sin. Mm -hmm. You have not improved yourself. This world is a mirror about you. What you see in the mirror, that's you. That's why, for example, now, you look at somebody, you greet a lady, you, you, a lady to a lady. Good morning, good morning. Then you say, she's very proud. You know why? She's your mirror. <laughs> Tell your neighbor. <laughs> Everything you see in other people and you say them, they are in you. You have seen them in the mirror before you. She's rude. Mirror. Who is rude? Me. You. He does not answer. Who? It's, it's in you. So, ah, this man does not answer just like me, I don't answer. But on this one, I'll complain. Why? Ta even now, we can take 10 people to go to a bus station, taxi rank. And when they come back, everyone will see what they have. No two people will say the same thing. Uh uh. Did you see that when the way she was walking with her shoes? That's you. <laughs> the way she was carrying a green handbag. This time, green handbag. It should be blue. That's you. <laughs> Every, everyone will see their own faults at the bus station. Even here. 
when you look at people. You are, if ever you are seeing fault with anyone, that is your fault. That's your character trench. Forty character trend in you. How many are comfortable? How many can say, this is me now? I thought I won't be reached. How many can say that? Why do you find fault with someone instead of loving them? The world is a mirror. Generally, a person is blind to their own defects. They are blind to their own faults. No, no, this can't be me. No, no, you are blind. That's why you are shown in other people. Because in other people you can see them easily, but not in you. So when you find a fault in someone, do a careful soul searching because probably you have the faults, faults, defects that you see in others. Same birds of same feather. Flock together. That's why you see you are attracted to the faults of others in them. Ah, look at this one. Ah, look at this one. Birds of the same feather. You attract each other. I can't hear you. You attract each other. <laughs> if you didn't have any personal defect, your attention would not have been drawn to see in another person. Because you don't have. Say it again, please. If you did not have any personal defect, mm -hmm. your attention would, ne would not have been drawn to see it in another person. No. Because it's not in you. Say it again. I think people are sleeping deliberately. If you did not have any personal defect, mm -hmm. your attention would not have been drawn to see it in another person. Are we comfortable? Because these are the things before God blesses. It takes, you got to get rid of all these things. Not the way you are praying. With all these things, you go, say, God increase me. Ha! Huh. How many people are going to benefit from your increase? How many people are you going to injure from your increase? To the degree that you are free of character defects, to that degree, you'll be able to tolerate others. <laughs> yes? To the degree that you are free of any character defect, to that degree, you'll be able to tolerate others. So, see now. Do you tolerate others? Junior, do you tolerate others? Thank you, Prophet, for this grace. I don't tolerate all, all, all others. I make, because of anger in me, I make others to be more angry. As, as you're teaching us now, I'm telling myself because, because when I'm angry, I take it out on somebody, and that person will bring its own anger. It will grow now. Everything will be angry, angry, angry. Why don't you tolerate others? No. Now, you, uh, now you're teaching us about this thing that that's the only thing we can do to grow. 
We never hear it before. I never take it to, into, into, into practice before. I never thought that it's something that will help me not to be angry. Because the anger in me will destroy other people. Not the other. How about you? It, it already struck me. Because if I check my life now, anger has destroyed so many things in my life. Yes. Even now in the present, even in the past. Mm -hmm. I, I'm where I am today because of anger. Anger got, go hand in hand with impatience. They are cousins. When you have one, you have the other. Tell your neighbor. Anger goes hand in hand with impatience. They are cousins. When you have one, you have the other. Thank you, sir. When you tolerate others, you will not see them as undesirables. Because when you don't tolerate others, you see them as undesirables. Ah, ah. But when, mm, no, this person is very good. This gentleman is very good. You tolerate others. If you are sinful, you will see sin wherever you look. Tell you never. If you are sinful, you will see sin wherever you look. That's why. When in relationship, when one does not trust the other, it's not the other. Is the one who is not trusting. He sees the same thing he does to, you mean, you can just be like this, you? No. Who rang you? Who rang you? Who rang you? I saw you in the phone, uh, on phone. Ah. So I can't speak on the phone. I say, who was talking to you? <laughs> this one who's doing this has got sin. So he sees this sin to be new. So jealousy, envy, every time, even checking and bag. When I ring, the phone should ring two times. If not, I'm coming there. So phone and the wife is next. Ring, ring, hello, hello, I'm here. Okay, okay. I just, I forgot him to say, okay, I'll ring you later. <laughs> yeah, the one tormented, not this one. You are just destroying this one. You are already destroyed. You are not free. You have never tasted freedom. No, you are Cain. Wherever you go, you see sin. In the house, you see sin. When you get paid, you should tell me what time they have put money in your account. Here, <laughs> Okay. Mm, I will drive you to the bank. To the nearest ATM, we go there. That's the only time you are driven. When he collects, he says, there's a minibus here, you can go. Huh? This minibus straight, goes straight home. Me, I'm going somewhere, I'm busy. <laughs> Why can you not be free? And let this person be free to blossom in the Lord. Some of us who have moved away from anger. We are not now in anger. Anger is small for you. You are now bitter. Tell your neighbor, anger is so small for you. Anger is small for you. You are now bitter. I can't hear you. Anger is small for you. You are now bitter. 
You are now bitter. So we cannot deal with you on anger term. You have become. You know, way back, penicillin was curing all disease. Penicillin. Any disease, penicillin, it was curing. But now the doctors are busy, scientists, to discover another thing because penicillin and your disease have become immune. Tell a neighbor. It can't work. That's where you are with your anger. Anger, you have now taken it to bitterness. bitterness. Here, when it was anger, penicillin could work. Where it is now here, demoniac, bitterness. Because your whole system, root of bitterness is in it. It's like color, color, you know, red color. If you can bring red color, small one, you put here, it, all of it will be what? Red. That's how your life is now, with the bitterness. You touch a finger, <laughs> just this. You are already aflamed. You find the door to another bedroom open. It's a problem. And there's no one in the bedroom. Why did you leave this door open? I tell you, you should be locking all these doors. So you start looking now for all doors that are open. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> oh, no. One window not closed in the kitchen. You visit all the house, even up. And everybody knows that's dad is looking for an open window. Because he found the window in the kitchen open. Bitterness. It was anger before, but now it's bitterness. Look, with bitterness. You, you find your husband coming from work very happy. Ah, very happy. Oh, great, great, great. Okay, okay. Then your wife, her countenance is downcast. Are you sick? No. But why? Why are you not happy for me? For what? <laughs> ah, me, I'm happy. I'm excited. Great things happening. Only you. We shall see. I don't think it's true. You, I know you. You always switch your husband or your wife from the men switch. Boom. <laughs> Total darkness. Why? Somebody is favored at work to say, this position next day is yours, you. They, are, they declare that in the office. They have made a terrible mistake. The boss has made a terrible mistake. Everybody now, as if cold water has been poured on them. You say, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. There are a lot of new cars there. You, you go with your friend, famous friend of yours. You don't show anyone. Whose car is this one? <laughs> oh, you go this way. You are going. You want to go out. Have you seen this car? Who is this? Why can't you say, this car is beautiful. God bless the owner of this car. May she enjoy uh, driving. This is of God. I can see God is blessing a lot of people. That's it. Otherwise, if you don't do that, that is sin. Because your 
you, you are not happy for someone's success. Your life is always, I must be better than this one. Why? I must be higher than this one. Why? That's why you go to Sangoma, you carry Bible, and Sangoma next. You mix the two. You don't need that. So I'm heading to this because of all your bitterness now, we're dealing with bitterness, not anger. Anger is small time bone. It's a small boy. Anger. Anger just, Satan leaves it to you. He wants you to come to the big one, bitterness. Because bitterness is self-inflicted curse. Yes? What is bitterness now? Self-inflicted curse. Yes. Now it's a curse. Genesis 11, 11 to 12. And as they're searching there, I'm telling you, that's the inheritance of embittered people. Tell your neighbor. Genesis 4, 11 to 12, the inheritance of embittered people. Genesis. Yes. Genesis chapter 4, verse 11 to 12. So now you are accursed from the earth, which has opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. When you till the ground, it shall no longer yield its strength to you. A fugitive and a vagabond you shall be on the earth. Fugitive, vagabond, heritage of embittered people. You at work, you want to look for another work. I'm looking for another work. No, no. You at work, you say, I should study more. I should study more. I'm not getting enough. You are a fugitive and vagabond. You shall be on the earth. Not Johannesburg. Not Eastern Cape Country. Or Limpopo State. No. Earth. You, wherever you are, nothing will be good for you. Genesis 4, 16. Genesis 4, 16. Yes. Then Cain went out from the presence of the Lord and dwelt in the land of Nod on the east of Eden. With bitterness, you move out of the presence of God. So what is that to, to, to live for? With what? Bitterness. You? Move out of the presence of God. Yes. Look, this thing started from envy. Now, from envy it went to anger. From anger it went to bitterness. It passed through the gate of rage. The gate of rage was open, you pass through it. Now it's bitterness. And bitterness brings you under a curse. How many people can say, I don't understand this? But, but I'm in misery. I don't know how I landed here. It started with envy. Ah, that house, I hear their child has gone to university in that home. Mm. Oh, who told you? No, they are celebrating there. And they didn't call us. 
They didn't even call our son. They've been friends before. Now they can't ask their son. Maybe they called him. Come. Did they call you these people? No. For what? Your mother says there's a party there. Why, daddy? They are celebrating that, that boy, I hear, is going to university. But we, we are looking for a college for you. Or you should repeat. You should write again in June. You should write, but him is going. <laughs> These people, they have forgotten that we gave them salt when they came here. <laughs> now it's here. It's bitterness now. You remember my husband? No. You remember when the, the same boy was very sick? It was our, the, the time our car was moving. We took him to hospital. The time our car was moving. But now they got a car there. They can't even give us a lift. They can't even greet us. It's bitterness now. Have you seen that they, when they have money, they buy all their children apples and they come facing us eating? <laughs> it can't be true. But you're agreeing. You're agreeing. Eh. Now, can't you see you're fearing this now? Now this is house is under a curse. And you have transferred it now. Can't you see that it's generational? You're asking your son. And your son now, oh, and you are saying these things in the presence of your child. That boy and your boy will never mix. Because when this boy tries to mix there, there's mom and papa here. So what are you doing with that one? These are witches. Don't you know that the brain that that boy has was yours? They swapped. Tell your neighbor. <laughs> to make this boy become more angry now. To say, ah! And when they meet now, you took my brain. Which brain? Curse. <laughs> you work and work and work. Nothing works. You are under a case of bitterness. You work very hard. Six to 20 hours. Six every day, that's your timetable. There's nothing that works when you are captive of bitterness. Nothing. Because your earth is cursed and is not allowed to bring forth her increase for you. For you. That's why you, you can leave the work and somebody goes there and buys a house. Same place you wear, same title, same money. Your friend goes there, they say, oh, the, the position you left, I'm there now. I just, we, bought, we just bought a house. What? We are still renting. How, how did you buy? Did they increase your salary? Say, no, 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 the same. Did they change the money? No, 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 the same. Mr. Brown, it's still the same. <laughs> if you won't chase out envy today, you do, it will degenerate to anger. If you don't deal with anger, it will go into bitterness. Then, you are gone. Many people here are gone. Though they say they have arrived. You know you are gone. Bitterness cannot produce success. No. Even now, we are going towards December, whatever. Your friends, you know what? I just want to share with you good news. Uh -huh. You have sister and brother, or sister and sister. What prophet said in the beginning of the year, 
that some of you will be promoted without applying. Eh, it has happened to me, my sister. <laughs> praise the Lord. <laughs> praise <laughs> Sister, praise the Lord. Eh? Oh, God is good, yes. God is good. Uh, anyway, anything else? Ah. Or you change topic. And you start thinking, while somebody is telling you about the promotion she has received, you are saying, when is my promotion? When am I going to start working also? When am I going to? When, 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 when? Before you know it, you are complaining and murmuring. That's the beginning. Complaining and this now is leading you to all the stages are said. You want to pass through them. Ask your neighbor, how are you feeling? So how far? are you feeling? Discuss. You want to want more from me? How are you feeling so far? Maybe from the depth of my heart, and God is my, my, God is my witness. Since we started ministry. From the depth of my heart, I've always rejoiced in the success of anyone. Whether one is going to high school, whether one has got four distinctions or one has got one distinction, I rejoice with them. This is great work. One who has started business, is wonderful. Continue. I've, I've, I've got my sons here who bring big cars. For me to anoint. Big, wonderful car. I don't say, ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> no, I say, wah. You know why? It's a testament, testimony to the world. Because a lot of people, in fact, all people think Christian are poor. So when God blesses his child, they bring the anointed, anoint, enjoy this. May you protect him, Lord. May others see what you do to one whom you love. Amen. That's all. And it's true. If you don't do that, You are in for a shock. The first thing you are narrow minded, very narrow minded. Tell your neighbor the sky is too wide for two birds to, to collide and, and fight. The sky is too wide for two birds to collide and fight. Again. The sky is too wide for two birds to collide and fight. So why are you fighting? Why the jealousy? No, this one is flying this way. Fly higher or fly lower. That's all. That's all. It, look at the sky. Have you at any time seen birds collide? Accident. Accident is with you. Tell your neighbor. There are so many stars in the heavens, and yet they all shine. Learn and rejoice with the achievers whom God is raising up. Amen. Tell again. Learn and rejoice with the achievers whom God is raising up. Again. Learn and rejoice with the achievers whom God is raising up. So that it will soon be yours. Amen. Yeah. So that it will soon be mine. When you look deep down in your life, have you ever, have you ever rejoiced with an achiever?
You've been complaining and murmuring. Have you? Have you ever drawn close to an achiever to know and find out how they're achieving? But you, instead of learning, you go into competition, and competition exhausts you because you've got nothing. But you see an achiever going, 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 because there are principles in achieving. Amen. You don't collide with success. You don't. You don't collide with success. Every time achiever, you rejoice with them. You praise God for them. And sometimes you don't even, they don't even know that you are praying for them. That's all. Hebrews 12, 14 to 15. Hebrews 12, 14 to 15. Pursue peace with all people. Is that your motto? Ask your neighbor. Is that your motto? Pursue peace with, with all people. Oh, not some. You have a small grouping. What if this grouping has got nothing that you want? That's the end of your life. Bless your peace with all people. Yes? And holiness, without which no one will see the Lord. If no peace with your neighbor whom you see, and you want to see God, zero. Neighbor you see, quarrel, and you are reading God's word, which says pursue peace, and you, oh, Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. Never. That's why you, Holy Spirit, you start shaking. He says he's here. Why are you shaking? From today, know this. If God will not answer you, Satan will answer you. Tell your neighbor. If God will not answer you, Satan will answer you. Yes. So before you pray, make sure you remember the first statement I told you on prayer? Because I think you've already forgotten. We should be praying tearfully and reciting psalms and many during and again, let us give prayer and meditation. What? Quantitative attention. We should give prayer and meditation what? Quantitative and qualitative attention. If that is not happening, your prayer is SMS message. Tell your neighbor, you've been saying you're praying, but this is SMS. You've been saying you're praying, but this is SMS. SMS, do you read the full sentence? No. I'm coming tomorrow, T-M, Ara, C-U, S-U, C-U, C-U, S-M-S. And from there, that's how you offer prayer to God. You are offering to God S-M-S prayer. You fail to have full sentence because you don't have. Continue, sir, reading Hebrews. Verse 15. Looking carefully, lest anyone fall short of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up cause trouble, and by this, many become defiled. <laughs> T 
Tell your neighbor, bitterness troubles people. Bitterness troubles people. Again, please. Bitterness troubles people. Bitterness, the case of bitterness, transcends generations. That's what the problem is. Why? Because the ground where you are stepping is cursed because of your bitterness. So wherever you are, it's cursed, your children, whatever, generations upon generations. My question this afternoon is, what will your children inherit? Ask your neighbor. What will your children inherit? Because the curse is passed from generation to generation to generation. Case of? Bitterness. See, because you are bitter, you are pulling achievers with stories that have got no basis. You just formulate a story. Because this man, this lady, this family, they are achievers. You formulate a story. That is because of anger. Look at your anger. Look at your jealousy. Look at your envy. It all stems out of your inadequacies and out of your frustration. You're frustrated. You're full of inadequacies. So you join this now. Satan now attracts you. You're not happy with all your neighbors because of your inadequacies. full of bitterness, talking, making up stories of people who are achieving. Galatians 6 verse 10, this month, this month, Galatians 6 verse 10, yes. Galatians 6, verse 10. Therefore, as we have opportunity, yes. let us do good to all. Ah, let's clap for Jesus. Continue. Especially to those who are of the household of faith. That is, we are the household of faith. Do we do good to each other? When you see your friend has got no pair of shoes, do you say, Shazze, Shazze, take this one? Do we, good, do we do good to all people? There's a lot of casualty because of what the country is going through, the whole world. Others have, others don't have. That's how I tell people. Do something good when you come to Holy Land. We feed people here. It's not that we should boast, but everyone who come here during the week, they should have breakfast, they should have lunch, they should have supper. Where do we get that? It's the people that come to visit, they live. So that everyone who comes here, they go back at least home, they are full. We are not all like the way you are. Others they don't have. We've got all the storage here, cold room, whatever room. If you want to buy things for the people to give for Christmas, bring it here. You know why you want to give yourself? Because you're a glory seeker. People to notice you. You don't want to do something that the right hand doesn't know. You, what the left does, the right hand should also know. Glory seeking. Quietly bring. Quietly. There are a lot of people who are helped. There are families. You, God has given you enough. 
But have you also given sadaqah to those who don't have? Because you've been blessed for a reason, not for selfishness. I'll give you a story. A couple had just a small field. So the wife went to, the husband went to the wife, says, our field has started producing now. That's the husband telling the wife. And the husband, his face was downcast after talking like that. So the wife says, why are you downcast? Why is your face like this? He says, ah, because it will be not enough to live on. Because my trouble right now is to harvest the 10% and take it to Jerusalem. The wife says, look, all this, what we have, came from God. Don't worry about that. Let's harvest what belongs to God. The ground belongs to God. Our lives belong to God. They harvested, and they went, and their fruit was accepted. A rich man who had a lot of acres, <clears throat> he was told by his workers, the fruit is ready for harvest, and it's wonderful to take it to Jerusalem for acceptance of the fruit before God Almighty. He says, I know. I got a lot of work to do. I can't drive all the way to Jerusalem. I want to harvest. I'm busy looking for markets. I'm busy doing this and this. The worker said, Sir, if you can't go, you can send us to take it to the temple. He says, No one is going there. You can't go there. You should be going around doing deliveries. They did not harvest everything. It started rotting. Read Galatians 6.10. That's it. Galatians 6 verse 10. Therefore, as we have opportunity. You have opportunity. True or false? True or false? Don't be like that, rich man. True or false? True. What should you do? Read, continue. Let us do good to all, especially to those who are of the household of faith. That's it. We've got grandparents now, our mother and our fathers and all. They are living on pension money. We've got others, families, they don't have anything. It's time to celebrate, it's time to share. We've got three places we are planning to share. Others will be because of the control. Others will be here. Others will be at Shiloh. Others will be at church. But let everyone just feel free. God loves them. Let them know God loves us. Let's have this fellowship. You have that opportunity. Your neighbor is not the reason why you should not do good. Failure to do this, you fail in your business. It's the thing that is in you. Not because you gave, then you failed. Not because you gave, then it was not enough. No, the way you gave. A lot of us right now, the things that are inside of us, we inherited them from our parents. You can hear the most revealing message, but you fail to act upon it. It's a case. Because it is a case of seed time and harvest. Our great great parents planted. Now we are harvesting where they are planted. Bitterness. Gener generational curses that need to be broken. Because if no one stands for the family, it will go on. The misery, the suffering, and all that you have passed through, 
those coming after you, it will be worse. Because everything small, starts small, it ends big. It wasn't like this before. That's why no one in your family witnessed that there was a curse. But now you, you can witness it. You went to school, you got qualification, you got everything, but you got nothing to show that you went to school. You even tore up your paper. That you, when graduating, you took picture. Anybody you see gathering against success never succeeds. Anyone you see gathering against success never succeeds. That's why even in your private conversations, when you see somebody is higher than you, don't touch them. That's not you who put him there or who put her there. Talk about yourself. You have to get delivered from bitterness. You have to. You are finding it difficult to forgive because that person is difficult. Your life is tormented because you are handed yourself to the tormentors. They are tormenting you. Proverbs 28, verse 13. Proverbs 28, verse 13. He who covers his sins will not prosper, but whoever confesses and forsakes them will have mercy. I didn't hear, sir. Proverbs 28, verse 13. He who covers his sins will not prosper, but whoever confesses and forsakes them will have mercy. Psalm 6, 6, verse 18. Psalm 66, verse 18. Psalm 66, verse 18. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear. His prayer will not be answered. That's all. This is in your heart. Behold, all souls are mine. The soul of the Father as well as the soul of the Son is mine. The soul who sins shall die. Behold, all souls are mine. The soul of the Father as well as the soul of the Son is mine. The soul who sins shall die. Forgive. You can come out of that bitterness. Forgive that woman from the depth of your heart. 1 John 3, 15. 1 John 3, 15. Okay. Whoever hates his brother is a murderer. And you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. Whoever hates his brother is a murderer. And you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. The immediate consequences of bitterness is sickness. Bitterness breaks your inner man, your inner person. A lot of us, we look whole outward, but we are not. The 
The curse of bitterness chokes life. The curse of bitterness chokes life. The case of bitterness, it makes labor unfruitful. The case of bitterness makes labor unfruitful. You labor, you labor, no fruit. You labor, you labor, no fruit. You work, you go to work, all you are increasing are debts. Hatred breeds torment. We got people here who are tormented. Hatred breeds torment. Every hater is under a curse. In conclusion, if you are not loving, you are abiding in death. Tell your neighbor. If you are not loving, you are abiding in death. 1 John 3. 1 John 3, 14. 1 John 3, 14. Mm -hmm. We know that we have passed from death to life. Yes. Because we, we love, love the brethren. That's, that's how we know that I've passed from death to life because I love the brethren. How about you? Have you passed from death to life? Because you've got a lot of motor vehicle? Does it say so? Because you've got a lot of manage? That is so? Because you got a lot of building or cloth, you got a lot of textile in your house. Sure sign. I know I passed from death to life because I love the brethren. I love everyone. You have mental pressure right now. Your health is falling apart. There's unproductivity in your life, though you are busy. There's unproductivity in your life, though you are busy. Bitterness is the enemy of man's progress. Tell your neighbor. Bitterness is the enemy of man's progress. Bitterness is a secret agent of Satan to destroy human beings. Secret agent of Satan to destroy. Because bitterness is a secret destroyer. You just see someone wasting away. You just see someone drying up. Bitterness is deadly. Bitterness causes havoc. Bitterness causes havoc.